Hello and welcome to the Yitzy Guitar YouTube channel. Today we're looking at a Fender Princeton. This is a 1968, very beautiful, all original, super clean amplifier. And we're going to be focusing on showing you guys how to add adjustable bias to a Fender Princeton. There's a few different ways to do this, but the way I'm going to show you I think might be the best way. And while we're there, we're also going to be replacing the bias cap, the resistor here, as well as the diode. So really just overhauling the bias circuit uh, in totality. So let's go ahead and get to it. So let's go over the parts list real quick. You'll see in the bias circuit of a Fender Princeton, there are four components. You got two resistors, one cap, and one diode, that silver guy in the top right corner. So uh, we will have replacements for all of those parts, and then we will be adding a fifth component, which will make it adjustable. So the top resistor you saw there was 100K with a gold band. Now in this schematic, it calls for a 5% resistor. If you don't know, the gold band right there signifies that it is a 5% resistor, meaning it is 5% tolerance. So it could be 105K or it could be 95K uh, or it could be 100K, but basically that's kind of the range it could be. Uh, the silver band resistors you'll see in most other places are 10% tolerance, meaning uh, they could be 10% out of what the resistor value should be theoretically. This original resistor is more than 5% out, so we will be replacing it and following what the schematic the designer called for to make sure uh, it is very tightly uh, measuring roughly 100K, which this one measures exact, so that's good to go. For the diode, a modern replacement is much, much smaller. We'll be using a 1N4007 to replace that. For the capacitor here, the original value I believe is a 25 microfarad 50 volt. We will be upgrading that a little bit. This is a mod. It is a uh, 50 volt, sorry, 50 microfarad 100 volt. So we're getting us additional headroom with 100 volts just to be on the safe side because there's no reason to keep it. I, you know, I'm not sure exactly offhand what the bias voltage is here, but it's probably in the 30 to 50 range. So why would we want to be so close to the max voltage rating of that cap? Let's go 100 volts on there. And then we're upping the microfarad value. Some people go all the way up to 100, but uh, I think 50 is probably the best middle ground in what I see most people doing nowadays. And again, this is a mod cap. These are rated really well, and I've had no issues with these, and these are fairly affordable too. So this is a solid replacement for most bias circuits. And then we will be maintaining the stock 22K resistor here. So red is two, so you got 22, and then uh, orange is times 1,000, so 22K. It is a silver band, so 10% tolerance. We're going to leave this in here and we'll swap it out if it doesn't give us the right value for the bias, but we will keep that in there for now. And finally, the fifth component is this trim pot. So this is a Pyre, P I H E R, and it is a 10K. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that right there, but it is a 10K trim pot. So basically, it's got 10K range of resistance, 0 to 10K. We put that in series with this resistor. We're getting basically 22K to 32K, essentially. That's the range of resistance we have. Now, there's a bunch of different ways you can do this. Some people will do a uh, literal pot, a full-size pot right here, epoxy to the chassis. I've done that before. Uh, I'm just not a huge fan of that anymore because you are essentially permanently altering the amplifier, and it's pretty needless because you can do something like this, which is much smaller more out of the way, easily reversible if for some reason you wanted to do that. So uh, this is something I think you should do instead. And uh, there are also two different ways to really install this bias pot. You could do it the way that Fender did it originally, which is actually not ideal, which is where you would have it on this side of the circuit and you would have the wiper connected. This is the wiper here of the pot connected to this wire, which is feeding the trim in the bias circuit. Uh, you could do it that way, but if the trim pot fails, there's a potential for you to have no bias at all, which would mean that your tubes would go nuclear and uh, melt basically and potentially take out a transformer with it. So uh, fenders were originally done that way and then it's very rare to have that problem, but those are really high quality pots they used back then. Nowadays, the pots are not as high quality. So what I like to do is the opposite side. So we'll put the trim pot on this side where the wiper is connected to ground. And then we'll have one of the legs here connected to the resistor and the other leg just not uh, in the circuit at all. We'll cut it. And basically what that allows us to do is have the adjustable bias just like we would the other way. But if the trim pot fails, we're still gonna have that 22K uh, resistance. So we'll always have that as the baseline. 
So yeah, just kind of different ways you can do things, but uh, this is probably the optimum method and we'll have it just kind of right there so it's tucked out of the way, but you can still access it with a screwdriver. So that uh, kind of completes our overview. Apologies for the noise of the cars driving by, but uh, let's go ahead and get started. One thing that's really important to note is that this lead right here, this ground connection, is actually the leg of this cap. So this lead right here is going through the eyelet and all the way over here to the uh, tab right there. That's just something they did way back when. So if you uh, you know are trying to yank this cap out, it's not gonna not gonna be removed. You're gonna have to cut that wire. So the first thing we wanna do is just kind of clear out space. And uh, basically what you can do is just go ahead and get your little clippers here and uh, cut it. You don't need to go super, uh, super long or super short. You're just basically gonna be bending it over, but that way it would just kind of give us a little bit of room. And then what we wanna go ahead and do is just heat up that solder. So we'll go ahead and get our soldering iron here, get some solder on the tip first. So it flows and we'll just kind of heat that up for a second. So it's a bit difficult to show on camera because the camera is where I need to be, but uh, I'm first going to go ahead and just try and lift this resistor up and out of the way. So I like to use like a little dental pick or something like this from Harbor Freight, super cheap. Just kind of get it up and under and then uh, we'll just touch the soldering iron to the solder, lift up like that. And so now we've got the, uh, the resistor out of the way, the cap out of the way. We can go ahead and just remove that solder so use our little solder sucker and then this way we can easily pull that ground lead out so that's most of the solder out so now when we lift up this board that should um, not be a problem for us so we'll go ahead and i'm gonna have to kind of adjust this a little bit for me to see and you guys to see as well so bear with me here but uh, let's go ahead and uh, remove the screw so we can lift the board up and then we can kind of take care of everything else so we got the board floating out here. Now we just wanna add uh, just a little bit of heat to try and get this lead out. It's kind of still soldered to the eyelet a little bit. There we go. And so we can just kind of keep this off to the side because we will be um, utilizing this in the same position once we're done, but we just wanna be able to get the board free. So now if we go and flip it over, you'll see that you've got a bridge connection right here. You've got the wire going underneath the board into the eyelet here, and the same can be said there. So we'll just take note of that. And it's you know helpful to take a picture maybe uh, on your phone, just so you kind of have a reference of how things are supposed to go. But it is advantageous to take the board out uh, simply because you can really get everything very clean. Now, this is a really good example right here. See the solder joint? Let me zoom in a little bit. So see how it's like a giant bubble? That is really impossible to do uh, in replacing these parts. That's called basically a dome. This is an exaggerated version. These are a bit more prototypical of what you would see with vintage fenders. And the reason it looks like that is because they actually solder them from the underside. So they had the boards populated and they would solder them from the underside. Gravity would pull the solder down and you would get that. If you had a ton of solder, uh, to an eyelet from the top, you will get that sort of thing on the bottom side. So that's just a little example of what that looks like. When people say a dome, they're talking about this, but this is an exaggerated view of that from the factory. This is an original joint here. So uh, let's go ahead and remove the original components here. Now, typically I leave the board on, but I wanted to show you guys this uh, just so you can kind of see what that looks like. It does make it a bit more difficult to remove parts with this floating in the air and you might need something to kind of hold it in place. So I might just go ahead and screw in one side. I won't be able to show the work necessarily, but the process is very simple to remove the parts. Just make sure you add a little bit of solder, get the solder flowing in each of the eyelets and pull the part out pretty simple. So let's go ahead and uh, cut to all the parts removed. Now here's another example of the cap lead being used for something more. So we had this side of the cap that was actually this right here. This side of the cap is actually the bridge. So this right here is actually also from the cap. So we're gonna have to cut it in the same way we did on the other side. And we'll just maintain that bridge. So we'll just kind of cut it there, move that cap. And also note the positive side is going to ground. On a bias circuit, the positive side is going to ground. Very important, not all bias circuits, I should clarify. Um, but on a fixed bias like this, uh, it, is, uh, it is going to ground. 
So we'll see that. Now what we'll want to do is just remove solder here and then bend that lead over. So we'll kind of do what we did before, heat it up, take our solder sucker, just try and remove as much solder as we can. Again, this is much easier with the board still screwed in, but you guys won't be able to see anything just because of my overhead camera. So just keep that in mind. That should be enough. So now we can see the lead and we can just kind of go ahead and take it and bend it up and out of the way like so. And then we can snip the excess off like that. Cool. So let's continue on. So we've got all of the parts removed. We've kept the wires here that were there before, as well as the jumper wire. You can see they're all kind of hooked over the eyelet. So you have a really good mechanical connection, which is exactly what we want to do with the new parts we're going to install. So first and foremost, we'll have our 100K resistor here. And this will be going right there. And we will want to do the same sort of thing to get a really solid connection. There's a lot of different ways you can do this um, to try and make it clean. Over time, you get kind of good at just, just eyeballing it, but uh, one kind of surefire method you can do, and I'll kind of use this to help hold it for me. Again, this is all just so you guys can see what I'm working on. Uh, it's really hard for me to get the angle of the bias board where it is uh, under here, under the lip of the, the chassis there, the faceplate. So bear with me a little bit here. But uh, yeah, so kind of one way I like to do it um, if I don't want to eyeball I can just kind of put it on there and uh, I will use a Sharpie to kind of roughly mark where I want the bend to take place on the resistor. Now, again, this is a little, a little bit, um, <laughs> a little bit more difficult with this just kind of floating in the air, but you know, the things you do for the camera, right? So just something along those lines, pretty simple. And then you can just go ahead and take it, I'll zoom out a little bit. And then you can just kind of take it and either use your fingers or, you know, uh, lots of different methods. Some people like to use a Sharpie, for example, and kind of just take it and bend it over like uh, on, on top of itself there. Although for something like this, a Sharpie is probably not the best, but uh, something like that, I guess we can use a Sharpie for this just to show. So roughly where the dot is, I kind of can see the, the Sharpie dot right there. It's kind of where I want it to start going down. And then we can just kind of place it in here and see if we were close. And we were, we were quite close there. So that should be more or less good to go. Now, some people like to have it, you know, completely sitting flat on the board like that. No big deal either way, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and grab the board. And we're just gonna make sure that we can bend these leads over. See that? Zoom in. So we've got the leads bent over now, so we're getting a strong mechanical connection on this side as well. You can see that that's not going anywhere. And uh, then what we can go ahead and do is just snip the excess. So what I like to do is just kind of push my finger in just over the eyelet to make sure it's fairly sturdy. And then we'll just go ahead and cut it towards the end here. Now obviously be mindful of where, where your little bits of lead go in the chassis. You don't want those just sitting around, but that's no big deal. Easy to easy to find and remove. Just don't forget to do that. And there you go. So we've got the resistor in. Now let's go ahead and get our diode set up. With the diode, we're gonna wanna make sure that the silver line you see there is facing the resistor. So we'll kind of have it placed like that. And we'll do the same process here. Now, uh, what we're gonna go ahead and do, let's just go ahead and solder it while we have it, since we're not doing any additional connections to those three eyelets. As far as what solder to use, I highly recommend Kester solder. Uh, I use two different ones. So this is kind of the thinner gauge right here. I don't know if you'll be able to see the, the details on it. So this is a uh, 0.8 millimeter. And then the thicker one I use is a 1.5 millimeter. And this just means that, uh, I don't know, for some things it just, I prefer to work with the thicker solder. And uh, this sort of thing I would be an example of that. So I wanna get some solder on the tip of my uh, soldering iron here. And then we're gonna go ahead and just try and touch part of the metal circle that is the eyelet. And uh, if we can, part of the component too, we're gonna heat it up and just start flowing some solder and see how it just kind of immediately flowed and made a, and filled it in. Uh, that's kind of exactly what we want. Now let me do the same over here. We'll add a little solder to the tip. 
and we're just going to kind of flow solder into the tip of the soldering iron. Last but not least. So now we have these connections. We can go ahead and, and add some more solder, make them a bit prettier looking. Um, so we can kind of just get more solder on the tip of the soldering iron like that. And just kind of place it on top. Now, because there's no board underneath to catch the solder from dripping down and kind of holding it in place, it's a bit more difficult doing it when it's elevated like this. If you have it mounted into the chassis with the backing board under it, it's going to obviously not let the solder dip down and gravity pull it inside. But if we go and flip it over, you'll see we got a little bit of a dome right there unintentionally. And that is kind of just an example of what I mean with the gravity pulling the solder down. Uh, it results in you getting a little bit of that dome. But we did get a bit of a dome here, you can see, and there. And we'll go ahead and touch that up a little bit once we're a bit further along. And it's actually in uh, screwed into the, the chassis here. But we're in a good spot so far with that. So let's go ahead and connect this back and turn our attention over to the bias capacitor and the resistor. And we'll start with the capacitor here. So a similar process, I'm going to try and just kind of flatten out these legs a little bit. Zoom out so you can see. You don't have to do this. I just try and get it, you know, at least give, give myself a good starting point. Unfortunately, a lot of these caps, when you purchase them, they're, uh, the leads are all wrapped around themselves, kind of like a, a, you know, in a pretty tight bend. So they can be kind of hard to straighten after the fact but I like to just, just do something along that, nothing crazy. Now, really important again, make sure the positive side is going to this eyelet, which is going to ground. And uh, you'll know it's positive because it'll say positive typically, or it'll say which way negative is. Um, but you also see it has an indent right here. And that just signifies that that is the positive side as well. So same concept, we'll kind of just put it here. And that's gonna be hard to balance it for you guys, but uh, basically what we want to do is same same exact concept as resistors. We'll just kind of figure out where we want to have the bend. And I'm not going to be able to have it sitting here because I can't get it level, but same exact concept. And we always want to make sure that the value of the cap is facing up so that any future tech can make sure and confirm this is the right part. So we'll just kind of have to eyeball this a little bit, but no big deal. All right, that looks pretty good to me. Now we want to give ourselves enough room for the trim pot in the resistor here. So I am gonna kind of bend it up. We got so much space up here, so I'm gonna kind of bend it up this way, a little bit more like that. So that looks pretty good to me, and now we should have a decent amount of room. Bend it a little bit more down to me since I can't see as well as you guys can. And now we're gonna go ahead and just fold the leads over in the eyelet, just like I showed before. Now what you can do to kind of hold things in place is just tack solder, meaning add just a little touch of solder and uh, just to hold it there for you. So I think we might do that here. So just a touch of solder, we wanna to touch the component and the eyelet in that corner and just add a little bit of solder. So now that's not gonna move on us at all. And one side is actually gonna be enough where it's not gonna move. So you can see just a, let see if I can zoom in on that. See that, just a touch of solder. That's a nice little trick just to hold things in place for you. Let's go ahead and put it back in our little grip here. So now we gotta add a resistor and we've gotta add our trim pot here. So we already decided we're gonna do this, I believe it's called the um, making a varistor, I think is what it's called, variable resistor. So uh, we'll be going the wiper inside the eyelet on this side. And then right here, we'll be connecting the resistor. And right here, we'll be connecting the, or, or this will be connected to nothing. So basically, it'll just be the trim pot right there. This will be cut and this will be out. So we'll go ahead and get ourselves situated here. We want this one, this arm to come out like so. And then what I like to do with these, zoom out so you can see, is I like to take it and just kind of fold it over on itself give ourselves a little bit of a hook. See that? 
to a little bit of a hook for the resistor to hook around so that we have a really solid connection. And then again, this one, we're just gonna go ahead and snip. So we're gonna bend it out and then we're just gonna cut it flush with the body. Just like that. So now that that's in place, we can go ahead and grab our resistor. We're gonna stick with the same value to start. And there's a good chance we're gonna have to replace this resistor at the different value. But for the sake of this video, uh, I'm gonna just keep it here. And uh, we can see we're gonna have to cut off a good bit of the resistor here. So let's just go ahead and kind of figure this out. We'll just kind of mock it up a little bit. So we're gonna leave it like that and we can go ahead and snip the excess once we're 100% sure it's the right, uh, right value. But let's go ahead and just visually look at what we're working with here. Let me bend over the resistor lead while we're, while we're there. So from the top, you can see we've got the resistor into the uh, 10K pot here, going to ground. Ground, we've got the positive side of the cap going to ground there. We'll be adding that ground wire you can see right here. Once we put it down, let's go and flip it over. And then you can see we've got the, uh, the lead of the resistor right there. Let's just go ahead and snip that for now. I want to push all these leads down since we want it to be able to sit flat on the uh, backing board beneath it. So I just kind of like to use my nail and just push everything down a little bit. That looks pretty good to me. And you can see here, hopefully, that we've got a nice hook there. So it's a really solid mechanical connection. In addition to, we'll be adding solder there. And in fact, let's just go ahead and do that right now so you can see what that looks like. Hopefully, you're able to see that. Can you see? Yeah. So you got the mechanical connection as well as solder holding it together. So that's super solid. And uh, we can go ahead and solder this side as well while we're here. And we'll save this last side for when, uh, when the board is on. Just like before, we'll add some solder to the tip. We'll touch, make sure we're touching part of the metal eyelet as well as the components. We'll kind of let it flow, get in there just like that. And if we want to add a bit more of a dome, we'll add some more solder to the tip, get it on there just like that. Okay, so now let's go ahead and bring this down, but we want to make sure we're feeding this wire right here. Make sure we're feeding it down through the eyelet. Okay, so we've got that placed and the board tightened in. Now we can go ahead and finish adding solder to that last eyelet there. This is gonna be a really difficult for me to do and for you to see, so bear with me here. But same exact process as always, we'll be adding solder to the tip. Carefully doing this, because we do not want to burn the plastic of the trim pot there. But that looks good. And then, uh, yeah, everything looks good to me. So now what we can go ahead and do is grab our multimeter. So we'll go ahead and put one end on one end of the resistor, one end on the, I guess we can go to this ground wire right here since those are all connected. And then we should see, so remember this was a 10K pot and a 22K resistor. So looks like that's our, oops, let's get a smaller screwdriver here or flathead I should say. So looks like we're getting about 36 and a half K maximum in the other range we should be closer to the value of the resistor itself which in this case is about 26k we can confirm that by going here so there you can see the resistor is about 26k on its own with the pot we're still seeing that and then we're just adding resistance if we go the other direction Perfect, and that is how you add adjustable bias to a Fender Princeton. Very clean, again, we will trim that lead right there once we confirm that is the uh, correct resistor. And uh, I will show you guys how to do that in a future video. This amp is not quite ready for that yet. It needs a full recap, a three prong installed, um, the filter cap, the can cap here removed, things like that. So there's a lot more work to be done here, but uh, this is how you do it. And then we'll go into more detail in a future video, which I will uh, link in the description 
and uh, add to the kind of watch later section once that is live. But let's go ahead and get a closer visual look, I guess. And there it is all done. Looks beautiful. And that's it, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video a bit different than my typical content. I figured I'd do a how-to as I was working on this, since uh, this is something I wish I saw a video on uh, back when I was working on Fender Princetons and Princeton Reverbs, adding adjustable bias with a, uh, a full size pot and epoxing it to the chassis. Just not the move in my opinion. This is a much better method and uh, that's how I do it. So if you guys liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments and subscribe for more content similar to this. Until next time, see ya.